I want to mahalo each and every one of you guys to, today for coming, taking the time out of your day. You had questions about okay, construction contractors. So always, always ask contractors. Like there was a lot of blockage of, hey, we don't have money. And we kind of opened that up to, so that they understand that. We rolling, we here in Kalihi Valley. Look at the valley. Beautiful place, man. There's a lot that went down back in the days <laughs> in this valley, or still is. The unknowns, right? But anyway, we're here today. We're about to unveil one of our fix and flips. One of my first here on Oahu. Um, I've been doing a lot of construction for other investors. And after 11 years, Here's my first one. So I've been giving a lot of value to other people here on Oahu. Um, that's where I stay, I live, and then, but most of my projects has been on the Big Island. Um, as you guys seen videos that I do brand new builds, that's kind of where I put more of my passion into because I can build more with, um, with the funds, right? Million dollars on Oahu will probably get you something like this. A million dollars on the Big Island, I can build anywhere from three to four houses. So I could put four families in homes instead of just one. So that's why my passion has been more on the Big Island, because it's it's a little bit more affordable, and uh, opportunities is still there for local families to purchase um, their own piece of paradise. But today is going to be a walkthrough. This is a case study so that we can share how. Um, we found this deal, how we funded the deal, and then, you know, the construction, what we're doing right now, construction, and then the end result, which is, of course, you know, putting it back on the market and seeing what happens, right? Roll the dice. <laughs> so I'm going to say what's up to some of the students that's here. Oh. What's up, everybody? Who I never say hi to. Hi. hi how are you, Steph? How you doing? Good, good. How are you? Aloha. Hi, Fuzzy. Hi, nice to meet, good to meet you. Nice to meet you in person, yeah? Yeah. Zasha. Zasha. She Hello. stayed drinking. <laughs> My tie is in Maui, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you leave Maui? <laughs> hey, brother. Clint. Clint. Nice to nice meet you, you finally. Hi, Tito. How are you? Good to see you. So you think this is it? It's a small group? Let's start, guys. We'll go, um, we'll go walk over here. I want to mahalo each and every one of you guys to, today for coming, taking the time out of your day. My journey started, you know, a while ago. Um, and shoot, man, lucky, you know, kind of getting back, you know, kind of similar background too. We, we come from the, from the streets, hard knocks, you know, and did, did some rascal stuff, right, to get, keep food on the table. But anyway, you know, I got out of that, I got out of that lifestyle and then, you know, got myself involved with real estate. So um, from the get, once I paid for that education like you guys have too, um, whatever the coaches did, I was trying to bring in value to them or other people that was part of the, um, was it Fortune Builders, right? It was the group. And the first thing was because I had construction background, all the people that was in that group or the coaches too was like hey i heard you you do construction <laughs> like so what happened was i ended up bringing more value to them instead of myself first i brought more value to them and giving more of my free time so that i could learn their side of the business which is the money side right how they find the deals how they fund the deals how they talk to the people the contracts that they have and that's what we share with you guys on the the hub, right? The Hui Mastermind. You guys have all the access to the documents and of course, look, action. You guys get to have me here, you know, um, in, in person. So I would say a good amount of time, uh, my first three years is um, I was building for all the, the top. Me and Simote was building for the top, um, what you call that? investors so like i don't know if you guys here in dar you got um corey Mimoto them 
right? All the all the heavy hitters, right? The guys that that uh, fix and flip a bunch of houses. So we flipped a bunch of houses, uh, built a lot of houses for them, and then it took me 11 years to get my first deal over on Oahu. <laughs> Crazy, huh? This is my first fix and flip on Oahu. Yeah. Besides the one that... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I was working here, and then on the side, I was doing my own over there. Yeah. But partnering up with people there. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this one was kind of go over what happened. Like we, ha we had the uh, Hui Mastermind before. We started the Hui Mastermind off of the bus tour, right? Where we took students to Big Island. And basically we showed them how, you know, where I get the planning, where I buy the materials, take them to raw land and to like, you know, all the different stages to a finished product. Then from there, after the bus tour, the, everyone there was like, oh my God, you guys coach? <laughs> like, we're looking at Zasha, like, should we do this? Like, because it's not easy to, you know, coach, right? Because all that back end and it, it's, it wasn't, I would say it wasn't, it still isn't easy. But we do it because um, we know that there's other people out there, like, you know, yourselves, like how we were looking for someone to teach. And um, we're actually, um, what you might call, we don't have to, don't have to do this, but to me, it's, it's more of a Kuleana thing for me, you know. Um, I want to see more people succeed that's from Hawaii, you know. No got to be Hawaiian, you born and raised Hawaii, you know. Shoot. More people to be able to um, stay here and not have to have to leave, so. But yeah, from that, we created the Hui Mastermind, the four-week mastermind class where I think most of you guys came and it was the four week where we do weekly calls and then we did the two live live events and then this was one of them i think this was the last class that we had um but this was on the mls you was here too yeah you was on the last class so we um we work with a real estate agent her name's jade halama so you guys have access to her too and she you know i always ask her hey Send me leads, send me leads, send me leads. And then I give her one criteria of what I'm looking for. And every day I get emails from her. And I just, you know, when I get time, I look at it. Usually if, you know, you, you get time, right? Or if not, you, you get your husband or your boy, or whatever, the other half or someone to take a look at the deal, right? And when we walk through this, this um, opportunity, um, yeah, I think, what was it, $7.99 they was asking, something like that? Yeah, they was asking about $7.99, and then we, we, we walked through, everybody had their paperwork, right? They break down, like, a scope of work on how much it would cost to, to fix it up and doing your um, due diligence in the beginning, your homework, right? And um, I thought, was well, you too, right? Was it you? Or... Put an offer, put an offer, right? Put an offer, no scared, just put an offer. And, you know, I gave everybody time to, you know, do that. Maybe it's fear, what do you think was? Fear or the unknown, what do you think was? The capital. The capital, yeah, yeah. So, um, but did you put in an offer? <laughs> but did you put in an offer? Now, sorry to put you on the spot, but. <laughs> I didn't understand the process 100%. Yeah. Okay. Now, that's why we, we want you guys to, like, ask questions, you know, because when you don't understand stuff, that we can, you know, better help you guys, because we wanna, want you guys to do this, too. So what you're saying is, if I put the offer in, I would have had time. To get the money. Yeah. So, one process that we do is, we put in these offers, even though, we don't, like in the beginning, I never have the money, right? I had like, I had capital from my credit. I, how are you? I have capital from my credit to pay for my education, probably the same thing that you guys did. But then I, I, you know, 
took, went through the, I devoured all the curriculum, all the videos, and then, but the one thing I did was I connected with the coaches. You guys have access to us. Don't scare ass. But one thing that they told us to do is go out and find the deals, and then the funds, the funds will come. Because you have Zasha and I to raise capital, if you guys find the deal, we can, we can help you guys throughout the process to find the funding. Um, but it's okay. Don't worry, we're not trying to pick on you. <laughs> we try not, we cannot, for me, we don't want to do it for you guys because that means you, you're buying fish from me. I want to teach you guys how to fish so that after you guys go through a couple, couple projects, you guys can fish on your own. That's, that's what we want to do for you guys. You know, um, but it's okay, right? You, this is how you learn, but that's a lot of people scared, ask questions, and that's where they stop. Oh, I got no money, and they stop right there, right? The money is there, believe me, the money is there. You don't need no money to fund deals. One thing is there's so much deals on the MLS at this time that you can come in lower or you can work with the seller or the seller's agent to do creative financing. You know, so there's so many options. And then every week we're going to try to bring more value to you guys. But the one thing is you guys got to watch all the videos, right? And find either you're going to go into wholesaling, fix and flipping, or, um, you know, brand new builds, right? The buy and holds, if you guys want to do buy and holds, um, you want to have some capital to cover if something happens, right? Say the roof leak or water heater goes down, you know, you want to make sure that you can cover all those hidden costs if you're a um, landlord. So, um, what else? So we found this deal on the MLS and everybody never put in the offer. <laughs> and I was scolding everybody, put in the offer, put in the offer. <laughs> and, you know, I seen it sitting still yet, so I just figured, hey, Jay, go put in 100K less. Right, so we offered at 600K. So we actually got accepted quickly. So I was like, shucks, we should have offered less. <laughs> right, because it went fast. It's like, oh yeah, we take that offer. But there was other, other investors that was in this deal before us at on higher price. And they locked it up and then they was trying to get the price down and then it fell out of escrow. Um, that's why it went back on the market. And then when we came here, it's just timing, right? You never know until you ask <laughs> or until you offer. And we offered, we offered 600, got accepted. I never have the money. All my money is tied up. So I reached out to Simote. I said, what, Simote, you want to do this deal? Right? We go cut costs on the renovation costs, and then I go help find, raise the money. Who I call? Guess. Of course, right? She's the queen, and you guys have access to her too, and me, right? You can call her. Like, you put in these offers, but you got to put in offers that could make sense for the deal when you do your due diligence. So the number one thing is, hey, here's an opportunity, right? You run your comps, right? And if they accept, you're, you got to find your, what they call it, max allowable offer, right? And if they ex accept your offer, you do a 14-day inspection. A 14-day inspection gives you that amount of days, and you can also probably give an extension to one, find the funding, two, find all the contractors that can give you quotes to fix it up, you know, and, and that gives you um, time, because you can always opt out of that 14 day, right? If you know, can find the people to fix it up or fund it. That's how easy it is, right? And then we. It's like, yeah. if you don't get the money by that time, what do you right. lose? Like, right. So you have that 14 day kind of to find it. Yeah, so you, that's, that's, so that's, a, that's one of the steps, right? You cannot be afraid to put in offers. The more offers you put in daily, weekly, right, the more opportunity you can have to land the deal. As far as, you know, stuff on the MLS or off-market deals. Off-market deals, 
a lot of times is way better because it cuts out the middleman, right? You just go and eat it directly to the homeowner, landowner, or a wholesaler. The wholesaler can, can make his cut, but you can negotiate. There's always negotiation in this business. Um, and always looking for, you know, at least two or three exit strategies when, when you, um, what you call analyzing the deal. I don't know if I'm speaking good English or what. <laughs> so excuse me. <laughs> this is not my, <laughs> this is my, like, I, th I told Zasha, man, I don't even know people for bringing these guys, like, but this is, this is real because all the paperwork and the binders that I got from my coaching program is still on the computer and, or it's in my closet. Right, so at least we, my, our goal here today is to share, you know, from start to finish. And then you guys, you know, some, this is like a case study for, um, for you guys. So and we'll, we'll be... Question. When, you, when you guys came here with the, the other group, you were selling them the offer because you guys seen that it was a deal and, that, and you guys wanted them to, to take that step. Yeah, so we, we what? What we did, we, we came, we checked out a couple properties, yeah? Where was the other one? We, okay, but what was the other? Pro we only checked this one project out, huh? Oh yeah, that's right. We went to this. The, the one had somebody. The one had 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 Obaki. Oh yeah, yeah, had. Oh. No, but that one had so much different opportunities to do long term, right? Like it had like twenty. Sasha wanted to move. She. No, but you could live in, you know, one section and rent out the rest. Yeah, it looked like what it yeah. was with a bar detail. Yeah. Because you would have one room, the shower was outside, and then you had three or four rooms. Right. Down in the basement had a bar, you know, actually a bar. Right. So somebody was running some kind of, I guess it was a Chinese thing. It was, yeah. was kind of run like one hostel, almost yeah, like a hostel, yeah. yeah. But had like everywhere you go, there was like a yeah. two bedroom or one bedroom with okay, full bath, yeah. like kitchenette, so. But yeah, that one was pretty cool. But um, yeah, but when we came here, right, what we was doing was we, Jade brought the listings for us to go look at. And you guys can do that with any realtor on the weekends or whenever you guys get free time. I would say start in your neighborhood, right, where you, where you live and find out what houses are selling for. Two bedroom, one bath selling for. Three bedroom, two bath selling for. And find out what the retail price is. And that's your end number. So all you got to do is reverse engineer. Hey, if I buy a house in here, I got to buy it at this price, but also look at how much it's going to cost to renovate and add all that cost up and see if it's even worth it, right? So what, what you want to do is make sure that you run three comparables. And we did that. And we're looking at 900, the ARV for this after we finish. But when we... Uh, raise the capital through you know other students right we if you guys want we, we still have a little bit more funds we got to raise to fin take this to the finish line um, so it'd be an opportunity for you guys to not trying to sell you guys on <laughs> give me your money but you know um, we we want to open up more opportunities for our students too to be involved right in, in some of our projects and um, Right now, I think we gotta raise about 60K left to take them to the finish line. We're almost done. I get the money, but you know, I'm just off. Like, we have the money to do it, but we're just always offering other people that wanna get involved um, and learn the process, right? We're, we're sharing this with you guys anyway, um, but you can learn the money side too, like how you know, private money lending, how that all pans out. And um, sorry, where I stay now? <laughs> I go on the first moment again. <laughs> Day inspection, that's when we did all our, me and Simote came back here, we ran all our numbers. We're at about 60 to 80K to fix up, but I always want to have buffer, so we had a 100K renovation cost. But what happened was when we um, did the appraisal, it appraised lower than what the 900 ARV that we had. So instead of them giving us the whole 100K, and this is uh, working with a hard money company. So, man, how can I explain this? 
we're using private money and hard money for this project. So the upfront money was 10% of the 600K. So we offered 600K and what we had to bring to the table to closing was 60 grand, right? So Sasha raised the 60K, we put that down to close. That and was private money? Yeah, private money, yeah. So I think it was like two or three students that put up funding for, for this project, for the upfront. Um, and then the renovation cost, we was looking to get 100K, but because the house got appraised less than what we expected, they only gave us 40K for the renovation costs. So we got to raise more money too. Yeah, yeah, 60. Okay. So that's what we're raising, the, looking to raise the 60K. Oh, no, 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 for, um, for the actual purchase. So you talked about the Dow and you talked about yeah. the renovation, but what's covering the mortgage? Oh, so we had, so we're going to have to pay the mortgage, right? But oh, it, there was, the mortgage. yeah, okay. yeah, we had to. So the mortgage is on this one, I think it's like 4,500 or 4,900 a month. But we had one month um, cash reserve to pay for the first, you know, first month. So right after this month, we're gonna have to pay like, you know, so um, that's why we, we gotta raise, you know, raise money to keep, um, to finish off the project and also have that, you know, monthly payment. I don't know if I'm coming across. So the, hard money, the hard money you get, you put the down to 10%. So it, and that basically the mortgage with the hard money lender and then you're responsible, your private money is between the construction loan from the hard money, right? So here, here we're gonna put it, make it more easy. We only have to put 60K up to um, get the loan for 600K to purchase. That was private. Er, money. Private money and then the hard money was, was the, the other, so they put up the rest. Oh, okay. And then they cover, they only covered, instead of covering 100% of the construction costs, I think they came in at like 60, mm -hmm. right? Or no, 40, sorry. So they normally do, but it got the house got appraised higher. So because never appraised higher, we just coming in lower on our construction cost to to um, you know make make this work. So what's your interest rate with the hard money loan? Was well, 10, 10, 10 point three, ten point three seven five, I think. And what's the benefit? Like there's no. Um, what is it when you pay it off early and stuff like that? No, there's no um, prepayment penalty. Okay. Yeah, there's no prepayment penalty. So you pay it off in yeah, six like months. one week, right? We could pay them back, and then okay. the faster we get it done, the more you know you can put back in your pocket. Okay. Right. Okay. Young question. With an interest rate that high, and you're paying the mortgage, I know there's a timeline. How tight is that timeline before the project starts going under? So we we are. Um, Profit potential, when we did our homework, our profit potential was about 100, 150K at the back end. So we have that much time to, you know, and if our mortgage is only 4,500 a month, you know, that has enough buffer for us to make the payments. But I think we projected to finish this within the next four weeks, four to six weeks, and um, put it on the market. Because it's, the location is pretty, like, pretty good, um, we feel it, it'll, It'll move. Yeah. Yeah. So what we what we're gonna do with this one? It was a one car uh, carport. We're gonna add um, more space to do two two cars. Yeah. So we're gonna push all this you know out of the way, and then we're gonna make uh, we're gonna make a lean to um, carport. So it adds you know. Yeah. So the wall is between us and them, the, the next door neighbor. Yeah. So our property line, shoot, I don't know, usually get on pin, right? But at the front, you know, there's a pin for the property line. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, this house was single wall. What we did was we wrapped it, right? After we, after we closed. So wait, before, we, before I go forward, any other questions on, on the, the money side? One, you guys know how to find the deals, right? MLS or 
um, from wholesalers. So if you're driving out, you see banded signs, we buy houses, call them up. <laughs> yeah. um, but No. If you're using hard money, right? If you're going in and, and you find somebody that has all the money and you partner up with them and you split profits, however you work that out, cool. Some people get deep pockets, right? But those people that get, say, 600K, you could use that 600K and leverage it to do like five houses or six houses, right? So you would just use a portion of that 600 to, um, down alongside with the hard money companies. So to, to go over it again, we purchased this property by raising um, private money lenders to fund 60K to the purchase alongside with the hard money company. The hard money company gave us 10%, 10.375, I think was one point. So one point off of the 600K was like we gave them like five or six grand somewhere around there to um, get the funding. I guess their closing costs, right? So, and then they also gave us, I think they gave us like 40%, 40 or 50, 40 percent of the renovation costs. So, which was like 40 grand. But we got to cough up the rest to, you know, take them to the, the finish line. <clears throat> Okay. And then I checked on the person, the owner. Mm -hmm. So the owner, um, apparently I know his sister. And that pers the, the, the owner got sick. So I'm thinking, oh my God, this guy's going to be able to So it's kind of yeah. like, oh my God, it's kind of, um, uh, you feel personal. bad. Yeah, yeah, like I don't want to be yeah. that, right. that, that, that local trying to steal your house. Right. Yeah, and, and that's a um, great, great way to, you know, come across or, you know, the way to think about it because, you know, ethically, you want to make sure that, you know, you're not doing that kind of stuff because there is people that go out there and they don't care. They just, it's all about the money. So one way to, you know, um, tackle that is by just, you know, just calling the sister and say, hey, because you never know what the situation is, just, just finding out. You know, is there any way you can help them throughout that process? And, and um, you know, it might turn out to where hey, you're not even making money, but you're helping them to, you know, sell the property or put them into the right people's hands for sell them for them to, you know, um, yeah, come out of. Win -win, right? Yeah, win-win, uh, right? Like First. They're going through foreclosure. They're not able to pay it. Right. Maybe you taking it off their hands might help them and their yeah. credit for good or, you know what I mean? Yeah, and and that is a, a tough. Um, yeah, and that's a tough conversation. But you know, until you get out of your comfort zone and just find out, hey, you know, I'm your neighbor. I know you. Everything okay with you know? Um, and just say anywhere you can help. Like find out, you know, what what the situation is, and and then that'll spark out. Oh yeah, we we behind on this or we behind on that. And, you just just listen to what their pain points are and then see what solutions or have them by communicating with them they're gonna be like oh wow i never know i had these um options yeah because they they prideful right too they put up on the wall or they're scared ask or you know talk about it and then in the end like if they had jumped on it earlier it, they could have, you know, made made something to be able to, you know, be better off for them and their ohana. So, yeah. um, so there's there's different there's different right there's different investors right some that they don't they don't care. Yeah. I'm ashamed. They almost they just don't have you know they don't have that aloha and I'm hoping that you guys get aloha aloha um, to to help like one thing is to help help um, the people that we purchasing, say foreclosures, that's a really touchy subject. Yeah. Um, and one thing is the first thing is always try to help them. Yeah. So good, good. Um, what you gotta do is just get in front of her and just talk story. 
And then all the other ones that you see, just take down the addresses when you're driving down. Like, I look on burnt, burnt house over there, too. Of like, you know, who knows? I mean, you take the address or go knock on the door and just talk story. Yeah. And then, I don't know, what else? What else we can talk about? What kind of questions you guys have? Do you know the holding costs? Is that also yeah. private money that raising? So the whole, yeah, the holding costs will come in from the private money or whatever money um, for the, you know, the whole project. So we just put aside, you know, the five grand or ten grand or however long we take to finish this project. So we make sure that we paid up the mortgage when when it needs to be paid. So the construction part, you know, like in this business, networking is key. You want to put together the faster you can put together your team. Yeah, you guys can call us. It's like Simote, Simote is on the speed. You know what I mean? He's on there. Like the the te our team is your guys' team, right? Like, just make sure that you know that that you guys do your homework first. Like, if you see you see that this is an opportunity, do your homework. You can use use Jade for run comps. Use Zillow for you know do quicker ones, right? It's before you call Jade, just run run comps on Zillow and then make sure, okay, this might be an opportunity. You had questions about okay, construction contractors. So always, always ask contractors, like you see job sites like this, pull up, get their phone numbers, get the card, ask them what their price per square foot is, right? Tell them, hey, I'm you know, interested in, not interested, just tell them, hey, I'm, I'm you know, a real estate investor, I'm just trying to get you know, contractors numbers and see what kind of prices, you know, if I was to get like two or three projects, you know, what kind of prices you would be able to give me. I'm not a homeowner, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in uh, buying properties and renovating it. So there's other students that funded this deal from the Hui Mastermind, right? You just never know what to ask. But number one thing is when you find the deal, um, like I, we always say this, coaches told me, and it's true. You find the deal, the money will come. The money will come. Don't worry about the money. So I say, like, dude, I came home with zero dollars in my pocket. I got jobs to get credit to pay for my education. The education that you guys are getting is not what I had or Zasha had. We're here, like. The guys that we learned from wasn't from here, it was from the mainland. And a lot of it was video calls and they didn't know the numbers. They don't know the contractors. They don't know the rules and regulations on the, the county over here. We do. And you know, better yet, I'm, I'm on the field, even with slippers, <laughs> I'm still on the field alongside with Simote, who's the general contractor that can help you guys run numbers. So that should push out all the fears that you guys have. Right, and then like again, Zasha is like the queen of raising capital, and she, we can teach you guys how to do that same thing on what she does just by reaching out, by having um, an opportunity like this. Hey, five of you guys can go into one deal. Yeah, you guys might make a little bit profit, but you guys go in one group, and then you branch off, you know, eventually. And in the beginning, when I first started, no, no, when I first started. I never have the money, so I linked up with the coaches, and then I brought deals to them because other students brought deals to me, and then I used them as leverage for money, right? And then they leveraged me for the construction, and that's how it all handled. And then when I started doing my own projects, instead of me making all the money, I brought on people who had the money and split profits at the back end. So instead of me making all the money, I shared with somebody who had money, but I managed the project. And then when we finished building the home and selling it, we split the difference. Does that make it a little bit easier? Yeah, yeah. Gotta get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. One thing is just getting out there and just keep, like you and Hunter now, right? You and Hunter for deals. Keep hunting for deals. Like um, Lehu here, she's active, right? And, and always learning Learning, learning is, is important. Just keep learning skills that can help you um, go where you want to go, right? Your, your why. And then, Lucky, you had a question. Yeah, Lucky, um, so if we help fund on a deal, something like, say, this house, mm -hmm. does that count for us 
as a fiction clip. So, a... so for your portfolio, that's a great question. So he asked if um, someone who's funding the deal, most cases, no, unless you are like become a partner on the title, right? So as far as lending, in order for someone to get credit for the fix and flip, they would have to be on, on, you know, on the title in order to get credit. And that was a big thing in the beginning for me because all the projects we did, I couldn't take credit for. And I, never, I, I would have been able to get hard money quicker oh, if, if my name was on the, yeah. the title. But you know, the, the coach is not teaching you that. And that's a great question. Like, in order to get that credit, you would have to be somehow put on that deed or, you know, on that uh, company saying that you're like a secretary or somebody that's part of that, you know, part of that project, you know. So, how well, you get money? I like, borrow. Well, they say need two at least, yeah? So, for hard money, usually you want to have three to five deals under your belt. Um, in order to get uh, a lower price uh, for your interest rate. So, and then proof of funds. I know that's some question that people ask, like, how do you get proof of funds? So with the hard money companies that we're part of, we're, because you guys are students, we're able to ask them to, what happened? Tell me. Uh, <laughs> your letter. There we go. It's <laughs> <laughs> the camera guy. <laughs> yeah, so no worry about, oh man, animal proof of funds, right? Tamper yeah, tambourine. <laughs> so, but yeah, we got to use, you know, mind, be mindful of them too, right? We want to make sure that we end up using them for, um, for that project. As far as the hard money company, yeah. Always expect bruises. <laughs> um, but, Sorry. well, with this one, no, all good. Ask all the questions. So with the county, they're allowing you so much um, to be able to renovate without pooling permits. Okay. So because we're keeping it, you know, That's like me. it is, um, take this one off record now. <laughs> I mean, we are adding some stuff that on the county record is not, um, is not there, but it'll bring value um, to the person that's going to be purchasing it. Permits take a little bit longer here on Oahu. I would recommend doing it, but it's just every project's different, right? You you gotta um, look at what kind of risk you're willing to take, and that risk is what we were, you know, willing to take on this one. Um, so far, you know, so far so good. You know, I mean, the neighbor's been good. Usually, on all the other projects, we did get violations, but the the rules were different back then. Now they're a little bit more um, laxed on what you can do on your projects um, before the inspector will come and give you violation. Yeah. Do you need the permits if the layout is different, or you? Yeah, if you start adding. Yeah, if you start adding walls, you start adding bathrooms, you start adding stuff. Um, legally, yes, you're supposed that, that's to. That's what yeah. you would normally usually yeah, get. Yeah, pull permits. Yeah. You need and, but because this is, you know, certain neighborhoods is different, right? If you go Kailua, Hawaii, Kai, all these, <laughs> get people that will um, definitely be calling. <laughs> In Kalihi, it's a little bit more, um, I don't know, more relaxed, I guess you'd say. Um, yeah, they do, right? Like, because that's the only one that's messing. That's that's what's messing everybody up in the. Um, when they renovate their houses is the neighbors calling, which is sad, you know, that ruins the relationship with your neighbor. Like, like for me, if I see somebody renovating the house next to me, wow, yeah, all good, go get it. So, um, so that's what I'm saying, like, you look at your budget, look at your timeline, look at your holding costs, all that stuff. 
and see what you know at the end if it's worth it like if we was to add more square footage we definitely would be in the 200 300k profit potential in the back end it's big enough to add more uh, square footage um, and basically all we did was wrap a single wall house so all we did was put siding trims change the windows and now it looks like a newer home um, so this in the county records it's the um, washer and dryer room right we just closed it up so but in the plans it shows that square footage of that so all we did was just wrap wrap the um wrap it it was open like a carport style you know so all we did you know this is when we, and what we did was this was a wall we added the sliding door to the master to come out right and it's just simple right simple stuff like that we add value that was a wall with windows so we added the two sliding doors so you can come out, hang out with your family. Inside, we can go walk inside. This side is the massive bedroom. And then what we did was we turned one of the, I guess one of the closets into a full bath. We added something, we added but, but knowing, knowing that um, we took the, we taking a risk, right? It's a risk that we, we was willing to take. Um, if the count, county comes, Hey, what is this? Okay, now we gotta go redraw plans, you know, get that all squared away. So the correct way would have been, and don't follow this, but you know, it's, it's your risk. Right? It, they um, legally they're not supposed to pass your boundaries un unless they ask you. They're not supposed to, but some of them just will come. You know, they, they're that deceit, not deceiving, or they're that desperate for see somebody fail. <laughs> What's happening, guys? This is uh, the students that are coming through who we're just showing this, uh, the interior now. We're walking around explaining the whole process of um, this fix and flip here on Oahu and uh, what we're doing on the inside from start to finish. So, but yeah, basically this is the master. I know it's kind of small, but then we added, this was actually right here was the, the bathroom. But anyway, we added, we added that to it, right? You guys all can hear? Yeah. So this will end up as a 2-2. Two -two. So you're going to walk in here for the bathroom. That's the main bathroom. And then that's the master right there, master closet. So you guys want to, like, insulate between all the joists of uh, the, the... Yeah, we're going to... Yeah, we're gonna, before we dry, yeah, we put the insulation, drywall, insulate the ceiling. And um, we actually had, there was a wall here, right? So we're going to do open concept kitchen. And um, right there's a laundry room in there. So, the, and then we'll have an island. And uh, yeah, your living room. So tiny house, it's like 700 something, almost 800 square feet. Uh, yeah, the, the lot square footage is like 5,700 something square feet. And it'll be, um, yeah, you could, like you were saying out there, you could add value, right? The person that's purchasing could always add value. But we're looking to, you know, get in and out of this. Uh, was like, was planned to do it within three, three months. You know, we're, we're getting close to three months. <laughs> so timeline, we kind of a little bit behind, but we, we, we should be, once we close up the walls, the finish line is right around the corner. So, but yeah, inside here's the laundry room. So we just enclosed the laundry room. There was a door anyway, right here. And my partner was saying, hey, we should put another toilet in here. I was like, no, enough already. <laughs> Stop adding. <laughs> we don't want to get into more trouble. <laughs> but yeah. So what do you guys think? <laughs> yeah. Are those um, cables like support or something? 
So those cables right there you see is the old, this house was built in 1947. So that's the old electric uh, wires. Wow. Yeah, with um, no ground. <laughs> it's just live, those live wires, yeah. But that's no longer, um, yeah, it's all cut. The wires are all cut. So yeah, we're we doing all um, can lighting, right, to bring, bring more light into the house. And then yeah, we're pretty much going to be right next week. We're looking to um, do all drywall and then finish carpentry. And that's the kitchen? Yep, that's going to be the sink right there. The kitchen, L-shape, and then, you know, dining room, and then probably one, one small island right here. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, had had you guys put the offer, this you know, this was on the table. But you know, it's like every day, like you go out, you search, Jade give you listings. It's like you never know if you put in the offer, someone gonna accept them. And then just one putting all the numbers together, funding it, and getting through the deal, right? Going through all the hurdles, whatever hurdles come through, like. Oh man, the sub never show up today. I'm like what? Oh, the weather. You know, like all kinds of stuff can happen. But making sure that you have someone um, there on the ground every day to take it to the finish line. So, yeah. This is a nice view right there. You guys ready for do some work? We're gonna bring the can, throw rubbish inside. <laughs> <laughs> I need some free labor. <laughs> I need free labor. <laughs> No, we, we, um, yeah, when this thing is finished, I think it's going to be one of the prettier houses on the block. Smaller one, but it'll be definitely something that people are going to be like, wow, okay. We, we could, yeah, yeah, so we probably going to end up bringing the carport out to here, to this side, like of the stairs, so that probably get like, yeah. Just carport, not enclosed, yeah. And then the rest of the area is just going to be yard? Or? Yeah. So yard right around in the back. Yeah. So, so do you guys have to like clean up the backyard for like... Oh, we will, yeah. yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, so I think we put like $15,000 for landscaping oh. was the budget. Our roof was like twenty-five grand. We came in under on the roof. But well, there was this big tree, I don't know if you guys remember, it had the big tree right here. <laughs> Huge, like, tree that... Oh, so when you removed the tree, the deck was underneath. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> kind of like that, right? When we removed the tree, all of a sudden, the thing would grow. Oh, I see. Well, I think I see. But... So, yeah. You know how um, this is your first project in Oahu, and then like a lot of stuff you've been doing is on the Big Island. It's because both, of cost, yeah. Both. I I've been you know doing renovations here, uh, um, on Oahu for other people, and um, yeah, I so I've seen all the violations and the <laughs> everything to do with the county here, and I don't like it, but it's it's getting better, you know. So I, we have the team that can submit or, you know, draw plans, submit to the county, and then keep an eye on it to push it all the way to the finish line. So, you know, you guys, you know, if you guys are on Oahu, we, you know, we got the numbers to help with that stuff too. CPRing, subdividing, um, Bill 7, you know, that's what Keolo was doing in the beginning, trying to, Trying to make us go broke in the beginning. <laughs> oh, look, this $20 million project. No, bro. <laughs> Just start small. <laughs> so all the flooring that you see get like termite eaten, yeah? All that get be repaired. So we just... Do you have a before picture before you guys touched it on? Yeah. Yeah. We have um, before pictures. Think he get my phone though. You gotta turn off the live right here. <laughs> <laughs> Only get like what two people. <laughs> oh, get eleven. So all oh, eleven of you, mahalo guys. <laughs> we see you guys. <laughs> Stay watching the business. Okay, man. Thank you. 
Hey, so yeah, today was a killer day. We had um, our students that came through. We showed them the whole process of how we found the deal through the MLS, how we funded the deal. Um, they asked a bunch of questions, we answered them, and there was a lot of blockage of, hey, we don't have money. And we kind of opened that up to, so that they understand that Really, if you can find the deal first, the funding will come. So um, I hope all of the students got through that roadblock because that's one of the questions that most uh, newbies ask is, I don't, I don't, where can I get the money or how do you start, right? One is just getting good at finding deals. And when you do find the deals, like it's like you find gold, right? If you know you found gold, you know what gold is worth nowadays? Right? You find the gold, then someone will buy it. And it's the same thing with real estate. If you find the deal, someone will fund it to purchase it from you or fund it to fix it up and then flip it or keep it. So if you're interested in getting involved in real estate, bro, Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear now. Um, if you're interested in getting involved, check us out at thehuimastermind.com. We have an academy where we do weekly calls and we basically give you everything we give you our team we give you our docs we give you our scripts we give you everything that we do in this business we're of abundance mindset not scared to share what we do because we want to see more locals succeed right here in Hawaii to keep more locals on the island because once they leave no more aloha one of the benefits on these this project right is that it's post and pier so if you go on the neat here, all the plumbing, you can see all the plumbing work. It was all cast iron, and you guys know what cast iron does, right? When you get um, hair that gets stuck, right, the cast iron rusts and easier to clog, and then sometimes the cast iron breaks, so um, we, we change it all to ABS, um, change all the piping to, you know, plastic piping, and be definitely better, but being on post and pier, you can always change the electrical, the plumbing, which is a plus. Yeah. So what we did on this house, we basically took, um, it's a single wall house. So we wrapped it with um, siding, right? TNG siding. And then we changed all the windows, trimming. And then we were actually, you know, slacking on the, on the landscaping, but we'll, we'll get a landscaper here to um, make the yard or cherry but we had some big trees that we had to take down back here which opens up but you know whoever's going to purchase this property they get an opportunity to go up or back because um, the lot is you know big enough to add value and then uh, we can go inside go check out the check out the rooms but, you know, somehow overnight, we, uh, somebody came, like the many hoonies, like, after we took the tree down, all of a sudden, money grew, <laughs> and then we ended up with a deck. <laughs> and this was a wall, right? So we ended up to open up um, the master bedroom into the, the, I guess, backyard into the deck was a good idea. So when you wake up, ah, have your coffee out here, look at your neighbor. What's up, neighbor? <laughs> so as you can see, um, this is in the master bedroom. Um, this is a smaller home right in, in Kalihi. But we're adding, you know, all new electric, upgrading the service from 60 amp to 100 amp, you know? Here's the bathroom with all the new, made sure that we took out all the cast iron pipes, adding the copper. So this is the master bath. And then you walk around, there's a closet on that side. And then this is the main bathroom for the guests, right? This is the second bedroom right here. And then of course you get beautiful Kalihi Valley views. And then um, if you did go up, you could see the ocean from here. 
our timeline budget we we didn't plan to add more value because we you know sometimes it can take a year and a half to two years to get permits to do that kind of stuff so anything to do with um you know adding value you got to look at your timeline and how long it's going to take right so permits take freaking forever on a wall so we figured just do a quick one renovate the whole thing keep it in keep it just like it is but just renew everything inside the living room right the living room kitchen we've got our students over here talking but we have um open concept right the open concept of what most um, homes are nowadays, right? You get the kitchen right here. We're gonna have like an L-shaped kitchen with a small island, and you're gonna have a dining area right here. And of course, your living room there, and then we got one, one laundry room, right? Laundry room, wash clothes, and then cook dinner, and then, yeah. So if you look, this is the old style houses, right? If it, you can see like single wall, the single wall panels, this is like the Hick homes, Hicks homes that, you know, all the homes that's been built in Hawaii, but all like red wood, it was red cedar and um, what else is Douglas fir was the woods that they used to use. But nowadays those are super expensive. So, but these are the houses that survive all the, survive all the storms and the hurricanes right is the single walls all the ones that's built double wall is the ones that's flying away so but yeah we will play some Thank you.